Welcome to 132 Problems Revisiting Mormon Polygamy, where we explore the scriptural and theological case for plural marriage. As those who listen to this podcast know, I always recommend listening to the previous episodes in order. The reason I do that is because those just beginning to engage with this topic will most likely have a lot of questions. And I'm guessing most, if not all of those questions will have been addressed in previous episodes. This is episode 30, and I'm really excited to cover a topic that's been on my mind quite a bit. Many people ask why I'm even paying attention to this topic since it doesn't affect us today without realizing some of the ways that it really does affect us today for some people in painful and profound ways. So my name is Michelle Stone, and this is episode 30, where we are going to talk about polygamy and widowhood. I want to thank my guest today, Sharon Collier, and I hope that you enjoy our discussion. Okay, I am so excited to be here with my new friend, Sharon. Sharon, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Oh, thank you for having me. Yes, this is really, really exciting to me that we were able to put this together. So as a quick introduction, Sharon is a certified life and relationship coach. She has a podcast she does that I've only been able to listen to one episode, but it was great. It's called Date to Your Potential Podcast. It's specifically for LDS singles. I'll put the links below. And then um, her website is lovingagaincoach. Is that lovingagaincoach.com? That's and it. you can contact her at lovingagaincoach at gmail.com. So um, Sharon has been a widow for 15 years. I believe you were widowed at age 37, right? Yes. Yes. And so that is specifically why I wanted to talk to her or what I wanted to talk to her about today, because I have several friends who are widows in um, members of the Church of Jesus Christ who have been widowed. And People don't see, they, they seem to in some ways be a forgotten group and it's not very, people aren't very aware of how polygamy affects many people today, but I would say maybe more than any other group, LDS widows are affected by the idea, the doctrine of polygamy that is still present, even though polygamy is in our past, right. the theology is still very present. It's very present in our, in our, um, understanding. I, 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 I'm hesitant to call it a doctrine because I think it's not a doctrine, but it's very present in our church experience today. Shall I say that? Yeah. Oh, for so, sure. Um, did I miss anything in your introduction that you want to no. know? You, you got it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Excellent. So I had been speaking to a couple of other, I have, um, I actually do have quite a few friends who are widows and um, some of them are not in the dating pool. Some of them are older and not interested in getting married again. But I also have several friends who are younger and either have remarried or have not, but have been like, I had a lot of people who had talked to me about these problems that widows experience in the LDS church, specifically trying to date again and trying to remarry. And so um, I had another friend who had um, wanted to come on, but then she heard Sharon's most recent podcast episode or, or one of her podcast episodes. And she said, you have to talk to Sharon. So I was able to get a hold of Sharon. She put us together and I'm so, I'm so grateful that this worked out. So um, specifically, so Sharon, I guess, I guess, can we start by saying, I, I, it sounds to me like you have been dating, right? Oh, yes. Being oh, widow. yes. And you yes. have not remarried. You're still single. No. No. Okay. So are, um, are there any specific things that stand out to you that you want to share firsthand experiences? Would you say that your experience dating as an LDS widow has been more difficult than as an LDS single, either divorced or never married? Oh, for sure. Um, I remember when I first started dating, I got on like LDS planet or one of those pages and, um, a guy popped in on the messenger that goes between. And he literally said to me, too bad you're a widow because I need to be sealed. And okay. I thought that was something that you didn't even need to say. I think I told him that something you didn't just pass me by. You didn't even need to say it. Thanks. So, so yeah. not only passing you by, but voicing actual disapproval, a need to voice disapproval. 
yes. is what you're experiencing. And I, I admire that everybody wants to be sealed. You know, I mean, that's, it's so, a good thing, you know? Yeah. So let's pause here. I, maybe people aren't up with us. Maybe I'm assuming that people understand what we're talking about. Could you give us in a nutshell, the challenge that single widows face in the church? Um, I don't want to be negative, but we're kind of the stepchild, especially a young one. I remember in my last ward, the, um, a lady had her husband gone for six months. And she goes, well, we're rallying around Toby because her husband's gone for six months, the Relief Society president. And then she looked at me and went, oh, like they've never read. They didn't know what to do with the 37 year old widow at all. But a lot of so times when you say he's been gone like, for six months, were they like he was, was, he he was traveling? Yeah, he was oh. traveling. He was in Hong Kong and he was going to be gone for six months. So the whole world was rallying around her because she was home alone with four children like me. And um Oh, sorry. That makes me want to you know, cry. I'm so you sorry. Know, and, okay. You know, and you know, it's something I've gotten used to, and I I never want to be negative uh, about the church at all. If I was an elderly widow, people would be mowing my lawn, and so you know, it's the young widows. Them. Let's clarify. I, so I should have clarified. Yes. It's the young widows specifically who yes. have specific challenges. So one of them is being invisible or not seen little bit yeah like oh what do we do with you you know yeah I you know what I think that probably divorced young women and widowed young women have that part in common I think that's common to yes. both yes that, that yeah it's well easy it, to yeah. feel forgotten or invisible a, a little bit and um I had a small conversation with my bishop because he didn't know who I was and he didn't know who I, I, I tithing settlement he didn't know I was widowed and I'm like you didn't know I was widowed it doesn't say if my husband died, my church records say single. It doesn't like they couldn't put a W on it. It just says single. He had no idea. He had no oh, idea. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. And so I had to tell him that. And he was like, oh, you could tell it's like, oh, I don't know what to do with you. Okay. you know, what do I do? And then you, right. get, you get the little um, obligatory. Well, if there's anything we can do for you, you let us know. And honestly, I have a really awesome word and I'm not going to criticize, but yeah, it is different. It is different. You know, it, being single in the church is different. Being widowed in the church is different. They say okay. we need to take care of the widows and they kind of don't. Okay. Like I said, if I had silver hair. Yeah. Then you'd be more, yeah. you'd feel a little more taken care of. Yeah. And so, okay. So that's the experience in the church. Now, can you talk about being a young widow in the LDS dating pool? Cause that's a, a little more specific just to widows, I think. To young right. Widows. Well, I told you. What the are the challenges experience. there? Like, like, um, what is it that, what is just nutshell the challenge that there is? Cause I don't know if people understand. Um, I joke and say we wear a, a scarlet W on our chest. Um, we, I have, the, there's this awesome group of widows, just if anybody knows, knows any widows in Utah, it's LDS, widows and widowers, there's a huge group of us, but we'll go to dances together and people will literally come up to us and go, are you guys really the widows? Or they'll say, why do you guys all hang out together? People have said that for years. How come all the widows hang out together? I'm like, who else do we have? You know, oh like, we're this exclusive group of cool people or it's just you know it's just a little different and then you know it's almost like it's like we have the plague it's like oh you're a widow oh, a widow you know <laughs> so okay it's just different why do you think it's that is different. is that is that because of sort of the tragic element like what do you like I, think, I know that I, you know death makes people uncomfortable, uncomfortable. I know mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, you know, and people are like, can I ask how he died? Okay. You know, and it's like, well, yeah, you can, you know. And so it's just, it's something I've gotten, I've been widowed for 15 years. So it's just okay. something I've gotten used to. And I kind of laugh it off anymore. Because okay, it's so, like, oh, another one, it's an, another widow conversation, another awkward widow. It's not awkward for me anymore. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I guess maybe, maybe that could be explained or as like, we are, Divorce is much more common and being never married is much more common. So in a way we have, because I know that a lot of women 
who are single for either of those reasons also experience these things of feeling singled out, feeling invisible. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it sounds like being widowed is even a more extreme version of that because it's not as common and we're not as comfortable with it or used to it. And we, right. and there's with almost widows, some even less. It. Yeah, yeah, like as hard as it is for single women or divorced women and probably divorced and single men as well. I don't want to just, mm -hmm. you know, right, right. A, a, um, as hard as it is for them to feel fully included and seen and understood with widows, it's maybe even more extreme. A and then bit, yeah. the specific thing that I wanted to talk about in connection with polygamy is okay ceiling is the issue with ceiling because that's the thing that I was the most aware of that is that sets widows apart from any other group widows are in an infinitely different category than widowers oh, right for sure oh yeah I would say widowers are you can correct me if I'm wrong but widowers are kind of at the top of the availability uh, desirability market among LDS singles a little it, it depends on who you talk to Okay. Does, okay. You know, people and think widows, that a lot of them have built a shrine to their wife, but yeah, okay. there's not a lot of baggage. There's not a lot of baggage like divorce right. baggage. There's, so, there's yeah. not an ex to deal with. There's yes. not a, you know, <laughs> yes. uh -huh. but widows, I would say are at like below the bottom of the pool of availability in LDS. Sometimes. Singles. Yes. Yeah. Tell us why that is. Often. Well, I mean, we can't get sealed and most divorced men, um, their spouses have moved on, you know, and the ceiling has been broken and they're sealed to somebody else. And so it really is kind of like the plague, okay. you know, it's, yeah, so men, it's garlic, yeah. So, and I, and I want to be careful to not vilify single men, although that, no, no, that it's a righteous desire. It is a righteous right. desire to want to be sealed. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that you wouldn't vilify them. I need to be careful not to yeah. vilify them, but <laughs> it's not it's not that men are bad. It's this idea, this idea, because men who have been widowed, widowers can mm -hmm. easily be sealed again, yes. right? With yes. the free uh -huh. understanding that they will have mm -hmm. two wives in the next life. Widows, if a man marries a widow, then any children that they have together will be sealed to the first husband, the deceased husband. And he will be left alone without exaltation. He will be left without any of those blessings in the next life that we believe are necessary for eternal so progression. So they say. That, that, so, that, yeah. I'm, so, I'm trying so to so state the, the understanding. Goes. Yes. That, so that's our, that's our problem. Okay. Yes. So that's the problem that we face right now. So, so I think I just want to throw in here how interesting it is to me that I know right now only of two members of our top 15, the Quorum of the 12 and the First Presidency who are widows, who have been mm -hmm. widowed. And that's um, President Nelson and President Oaks. There may be mm -hmm. others. I know we have had others in the past, but yeah. my recollection is, is that universally men in those positions when they are widowered, do I say widowed? <laughs> when, yes. when their spouse p passes away, they marry a single, never been married woman. I know that I Wendy have, Nelson. I have heard that, and it does seem like a pattern. I, I've I've never heard that like officially, but I have heard that. Yes, I like I there's seems, a list or something. Right, right. That's how it appears because there are far more divorced or widowed women than there are never been married women at um at the ages that general authorities would yeah, be dating yeah. if if i'm mistaken that's my assumption i haven't looked that right. up but that's I, my assumption I, I would think so that's yeah. my experience I would think so. yeah i would and so, so i know far far more widowed or divorced women than never married women at at the you know in their 50s 60s right and right. um 40s and um it seems to me that somehow being, you know, definitely being a general authority, you have more your pick, <laughs> right? Right. Oh, and that's, that's like who that's they pick. That's not appealing. Right. Well, mm -hmm. that's who that, so that not only is it the idea that we have been given, but it also is the model that is being set by our leaders. And so that's an oh, interesting, yeah. that's an interesting thing as well, Right. So, um, I get. I I guess I've never thought of that aspect of it, you know, because it's like you said, widowers are kind of appealing out there, you know, mm -hmm. the lack of baggage and. I do know, know several good, widowers. Most of them know what a good marriage is. Yeah. Right. I have a couple of good friends who are married to widowers, and 
and you know feel even though they're like raising their children as their own now they like they get to step in and become a mother to those children instead of a stepmother which in some ways is appealing for some women you know oh yeah and I mean they're angels to to raise these other children but I would say that it is a in some ways a less fraught situation because there isn't the divorce to oh yeah there's no drama there's yeah there's no there's no drama behind it yeah Right. And so I guess while this idea of polygamy serves widowers quite well, it's yeah. on the back of widows. It right. as good as it could be for widowers, it's equally or more damaging to widows is, um, is my perception. Yeah, there is a clause. Did you know this? That after, yeah. like if I remarried after I pass away, then I could be sealed to the next, I, you know, my next husband, they could do that. So yes, so I want to share a couple of- Oh, I have to die first. Right, so so the idea is that after a woman has passed away, and I don't understand, I don't, it's hard for me to understand the reasoning behind this, but after a woman has passed away, she can be sealed to both of her husbands or however many husbands she was married to, but it has to be after she died. Mm -hmm. And with the understanding that she'll have the option to choose. So there still is that someone's going to be left out in the cold if we cling to this ideology, to this idea. Of well, it sounds like that. I would hate to actually believe that, but that's what it sounds right. like. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it sounds I guess like. that's the understanding that we yes. that we that we have at this point. So but I can't of, I can't imagine it being that way. Right. No, right. Well, so so just as we spoke about, I believe the whole idea is was a mistake from the beginning. The whole idea of polygamy. I think that we claim to know a lot more than we actually know. That's my belief. I think right. that it's it's interesting because um, so Elder o- President Oaks gave a talking conference and I won't remember how many years ago it was. Was it in? Oh, I'd have to look it up. I should have written it down. It's called Trust in the Lord. And it's mm-hmm. the one where he addressed the woman concerned about marrying to a it man. It wasn't who was that long ago. Up. Like it was only maybe 2019. Yeah. I was going to say 2018. Yeah. Or 2018. Yeah. So yeah, it was, yeah, we can look it up. I sh- yeah. And, and it was interesting because uh, it was a little bit hard for me because he kind of mocked the woman's concerns. You know, he had everyone laugh about, can I have my own right. house at least in the next right. life? But um, where I think these are genuine issues that people, you know, have. I'm sure I was more sensitive to it than others because of my come from. But, um, but the thing that was interesting was the whole theme of his talk was trust in the Lord. The Lord right. loves us and the Lord right. won't leave us hanging, right? And right. so I find it interesting that we are like, we, and he says many times throughout it, we don't know, like it hasn't been revealed. We don't know about many different situations. Right. But he, I find it interesting because it's kind of like, well, we do know this. We do know that men can be sealed to more than one woman and women can't be sealed to more than one man. But other than, uh, what, uh, more than one man. But other than that, trust in the Lord and don't worry about it. And I guess for me, I would like us to stay, take that trust in the Lord one step further right to say we don't know and and the idea of we don't know one step further to say we truly don't know right there are a lot of complicated situations in this temporal world that we live in and we trust the lord to make all to wipe all tears to you know work right. all things out and it's beyond our our understanding including that men can have multiple wives, <laughs> right? Right, right. But I, it's like, we don't know, but we do know Heavenly Father. Right. And we know, we know he's us. not going to leave anybody hanging, you know? And right. um, I've actually talked people, um, I don't want to say talked them down from having suicide, but um, oh. I asked a guy once, I said, you know, and he, I think he had attempted at this point, but he, um, I said, what's going to happen to me? just for listeners, my husband died by suicide. Um, I said, what's going to happen to me if my ceiling's broken? And he said, oh, Sharon, there's a man, there's a man in the eternities for you if your ceiling's been broken. And I said, well, then why would you do that and have your wife go find some other man in the eternities, you know, kind of thing. So I, I believe that there are, there are ways to work it out. Right. There are, right. You know, there are ways. To, I mean, we, we hear, um, we hear stories like you can't repent after you die. And if there's time I can tell the story, but I had a very strong impression that I did something for my husband that helped in his repentance. Right. Well, um, right. You know, and so there's just things that we don't know. 
I completely yeah. agree. I completely agree. We know that there is pre there is um proselyting preaching. What what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, but we, we teach and... in the next life and yes. and we believe in eternal progression. So yes, I, I yes. I've heard that it's much easier in this life because we have a body. You know, yes. that's what, so yes. but um but I want to jump now. So so I have a couple of um, I guess personal stories, my friends, you know, stories that I can share of friends who have been widowed, some experiences okay. they had. And I, I can share a few of those. I also wonder if you have any personal stories that you want to share and then and with with either that you have experienced or that people you know in the LDS world have experienced, just so we can give some of the details of how this affects people. And then I do want to play a little clip of your podcast um, episode okay. that was that this topic came up, if that's all right. Okay. Oh, yeah. So so um, first I'll share about a friend that I have that um, she remarried. Well, she um, is a widow and she married a widower and okay. they, they got married and then had a child together and she okay. kept her first ceiling. Right. So mm -hmm. they both have their ceiling intact. And um they were coming home from primary one day and their littlest, you know, their, their yours, mine, and their ours uh -huh, right? yeah. was talking about um, eternal families and how he was so glad they had an eternal family. Cause that's what they'd been learning about. One of the older siblings said, we're not an eternal family. You're not sealed to dad. You're, you know, Aww. you're not sealed to dad. Just yeah. in, not trying, not knowing, you know, the damage it was, I don't think it was an intentionally mean thing. It was just a older right. sibling right. and that little child was devastated oh devastated. i'm sure i'm sure you find out that he was sealed to someone he didn't know and that he wasn't sealed to his dad and that they weren't a forever family and you know and that that mom had a lot of feelings about that and a lot because she'd been a widow in the dating right. market before right. she married her husband and so she had experienced this already and it was kind of like it never goes away it never you know, so now it was affecting her child and quite devastating to him. And she just kept saying kind of the same thing. We're saying like, God loves us. Yeah. God knows how much yes. he loves your daddy and he'll always yeah. be your daddy. And I'll, you know, like, like we have to believe in the goodness of God without knowing the details. Right. And, um, right. and so, I, so I guess what I'm wanting to say, like, I just want people to understand that the, um, the, uh, these ideas do damage currently they currently hurt people, right? If we, if we don't understand them correctly. Right. Well, I can see, yeah, definitely, definitely a child, how that would be um, hurtful. I guess I try not to look at it that way, but you know, you could, you know, it's because I'm in the situation and I have to make the best of it. Right. And right. so my, I haven't had any experience like that with my children. And so I'm like, that is devastating, you know, for the child. And you know, I can say all day, you have to have just have so much faith because Heavenly Father loves us and, you know, it's all going to work out and he's always going to be your daddy and all this stuff, you know, but it's like, it's hard for somebody else to understand. You know, it's like me telling some guy, well, and you have it in the podcast. It's like, no, you just have to have faith. Easy for me to say, I have that ordinance. I have the ceiling ordinance. So it's, you know, it's easy for me to say, you just have to have a lot of faith. So yeah, are there complications with it? Yes. You know, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure there are. Um, I have a friend who remarried a widower and she said, it's going to, it's hard for me to think that after we both die, I'm going to shake his hand and say, thank, you know, thank you for taking care of me and go back to my first husband. She goes, because I love him. Right. You know, she goes, so how is that going to work? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, <laughs> right. Know it's really it. tricky. It's, right. You know, it's, it's like, it these ideas make so much sense on the male side saying, I love these two women, but then it puts women who love two men in a difficult spot. And I think for all, like for all of us, it's just trust in God. I'm, I wasn't trying to be right. too right. negative. I'm just trying right. to say, you, you know, know oh, these, these are... aren't easy answers. We don't have, yeah, no, we can't pretend that really tricky, is an easy yeah. answer because it leaves a lot of people out in the cold. And, you know, it, it does. It, it does. If Yeah. I just try not to look at it that way. Cause that's, my life, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I guess, yeah. So, so just to clarify, the reason I'm looking at it this way is because I do want to help. I'm, 
I guess what I feel inspired to do is to help people look more deeply into the yes. idea of polygamy to try to investigate whether it's truly of God. And I know that, you know, Jesus makes it pretty clear how he feels about the widows, right? Yes. Like, yes. like, what do we have? James 127, pure religion and undefiled is to visit the fatherless and to, you know, take care yes. of the widows. Yes, yes. And I guess a, any doctrine that like, in a way, that little boy I was talking about, that widow and widower yeah. son would be considered fatherless in this doctrine, right? right. And, and so any theological idea that is that that pushes widows and orphans lower when like, so the story of, I, I just don't believe that's of God. I don't believe that God promotes the most elevated, the most like, like the general authorities and, you know, Brigham Young was very wealthy and had, you know, and so he would, this doctrine promoted him, elevated him at the expense of demoting widows in a way. That's, that's one thing that I think is an, in, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I sound like I'm trying to convince you. I just, and for the right. audience, it's something to think about at least the idea of polygamy. Another, right. like, I'm sure you're very familiar of the story with the widow's might, right? It's in, oh yeah. um, Luke 21 and Mark 12. And I think we often talk about that more in terms of the widow gave everything her great faith, right? But I think for me, when I read that scripture in context, like it's at the very beginning of Luke 21 and at the very end of Luke 20, and also right before it in Mark 12, Jesus is saying, beware of those who devour widows' houses, who who build up religion on the backs of the poor, right? And right. and he sees right then, he sees a widow so either hopeless or, you know, kind of like, what else do I do? I'll just hope I can go die. Like she gave everything she had. She right. The implication is the possibility that she went home and died, right? That like she had nothing left. Right. And instead of this wealthy religious system helping her it was built up on her back I don't think that Jesus was saying oh isn't this wonderful like no. my interpretation no. is something is very wrong here because then he immediately after that goes on to say everything's going to be pulled down but you know like right. to prophesize right. the destruction of the temple so in context I think that the message I get from that story is that a religious system should never be built up on the backs of the widows and the orphans and the poor. Oh, yeah. no. And I, after I became a widow, I was a little shocked that there wasn't more out there for us. Um, because, you know, I talked about it in the podcast, Thomas Monson's funeral, take care of the widows and the fatherless. And I thought, yes, yes, there's going to be something put in place for us. Like, it would be really cool for us to have maybe our own ward. We get together all the time because we understand each other. We went through an ugly thing and we get it. You know, so it would be cool, especially I'm an empty nester. Well, most of the time, <laughs> it depends on who's moving in and out, but um, who's between apartments, but um, it would be really cool for me to be able to go to church with the other widows, Oh, you know, so, you know, so I thought, you know, because we get it. I remember the first party I went to, I'm like, I'm going to a widow party. And people say that all the time you're having your widow friends over like a party. And I'm like, yes, it's so depressing. We drape ourselves in black and, and we sit around and cry, you know, yeah. which we, yeah. we don't, you know, I have a swimming pool in my backyard. We have a riot. In fact, my next door neighbor single and he goes, I'm dating a widow. Does that mean I can come to your parties now? You know, because we have a great time together because we all get it. We all get each other. And, and, it is, and when people hear the word widow, it is a little intimidating and scary. And, you know, people are like, you hang out with widows. I'm like, yeah, we sit in rocking chairs and knit, you know? <laughs> sure, that's so <laughs> great. Can yeah. I tell people, um, I, you're in Utah, right? You're near me. Yeah. So yeah. if people wanted to maybe get in touch, if there are widows out there who are feeling alone, could, could they contact you through your email? loving again oh, yeah. coach at gmail.com to see if there's any oh if they sure. can maybe be invited to some of your wonderful parties so um facebook if they're not on facebook it's hard but yeah they can contact me um lds widows and widowers there's an events page that talks about all our events um 
there. So LDS widows and widowers and is widowers. what people should look up. Uh, at Facebook, on Facebook, we do conferences. Um, I've spoken at a lot of them about dating, being a widow and dating and, you know, the difference between dating as a widow, you know, we have brain fog, we have scammers that target us. There's different things that go on. So yeah. Okay. But it is a community and it's a good one. But I really thought after Thomas Monson's funeral, I thought they're going to do something for us, you know, and I know it's hard because what do you do for us? You know, my own lawn. I don't like it. I mean, come mow my lawn. <laughs> if anybody in my ward's listening. <laughs> sure. Or just by inspiration, find ways to make make it more understood. Because Thomas Monson, I did, I listened to several of his talks. Mm-hmm. He, he spoke often about the widows. He, you know, he yeah. told often his story of being the bishop of the ward with, was it 83 widows? And that was a that was a real message of his was caring for the widows. And yeah. I think that you're right that part of the problem is to be a widow, you have to be in your 70s, 80s, 90s, right? Yes. To yes. to um qualify. And so in a way, we need more notice taken of the young widows. That's yes. okay. This is good. Yeah. So all of us, maybe all of us can take it upon ourselves also to spend more time in prayer. You know, I hope that each of us asks every day, Lord, who can I bless today? How can you use me today? But maybe to specifically yes. focus on, is there a widow who needs something that I can offer? Something, that's, yeah. that's a good thing for all of us. Even if the church hasn't come up with a system, each of us can yes. have more awareness. I think that yeah. that's... I, I'm aware of the widows. I'm, I'm certain that you are. Yes. I, I, I was talking to all of us who... Yes, I know. No, no, widows. you know, but no, I am more aware of that in my work. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. oh, you're a widow. You need to come to stuff or you need, you know, it's like check in more and things like that because, you know, yes, I I understand. Okay. So, um, so I want to shift to kind of the dating relationship, um, topic, because that's the one that I was the most aware of, I think that in, in stories I've heard. And I have to say, you are much, much more patient and nicer about it than I think I am. (laughs) I I really admire because this podcast episode, your first question on the Q&A you did was a really interesting question. And you were very, very nice in your answer. And so um, I felt a little more like, Sharon, come on, give him a piece of your mind, <laughs> you know, so I admire how you handled it. Oh, but thank you. Would you like me to go ahead and play that? Or would you sure. rather tell some, have you had other experiences you want to share first? Or should I just play uh, that? Um, uh, no, no, you can, you can play it. Okay, so this is at a singles conference, a Q&A, and I'm just going to cut, this is episode 11 of the podcast that you can find below. I hope you can hear this. Okay, we're here with Ian, and he has a question for us. I do. In the dating world of Mormons or LDS that are current temple recommend holders, Mm -hmm. um, to find a companion after the dating process, (laughs) there are certain roadblocks that come up. And one of them is a person that is current recommend, but they're widowed and are sealed to their first husband. And therefore, it would be a major red flag to continue with that relationship if the goal was marriage and she doesn't want to give up her her right of her first marriage to us being sealed. Thus, also, to find a, a person that's divorced is a little easier because they have every incentive to get rid of that first sealing and be resealed to someone else. So why is it that these widows are back in the dating field if they're not going to commit to an eternal uh, companionship. So why is it that these widows are back in the dating field if they're not willing to give up their eternal companionship? He's actually said it. <laughs> he actually said he actually, the thing. He, he, ac- he actually said it. He actually said it. Um, are you going to play the rest of it or do you want me to talk about it? Well, we'll go on. I had I had another little clip I was going to play, but you go ahead and talk. I wanted to give that part to, to start with, so, just so people could hear both the struggle for men. I it is a struggle for whoop. men who are not sealed, but okay, mm, I, I I want to acknowledge that that these aren't just bad guys, right. but also you know 
if we are going to go with this doctrine and this ideology, we have a pretty good role model in Joseph, the, the husband of Mary, right? right? Right. When Jesus was the son of God. So, right. you know, in the way that Brigham Young taught it, Mary was God, the father's wife. I, this isn't, this is not my right. belief. This right. is what Brigham Young right. taught, who was the right. teacher of polygamy. So, you know, we do have the role model of Joseph, which is a pretty good role model for a man of faith, but you go right. ahead and respond to this idea that is actually being said aloud right here. So we asked him just beforehand what he wanted to talk about. And he said, you know, I want to know why widows are out there in the dating pool. But he didn't say anything like the red flag, because my first response was, you're a red flag. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> the idea that you're you just put it into words and not very kindly either. I, I literally I, this came up on the page, the widow page, the LDS widows and widowers, because they're like, I was a little triggered by him. And I'm like, we were all triggered by him. So I maintained professionalism. Well and, done. You know, I, did. I, did. I, I did. And everybody was like, good job. Because I was like, what? I told him, I said, I was widowed at 37. It's like, would you tell me not to ever remarry? My youngest was six years old. And so, you know, it was like, yeah, my kids probably need a dad, which they ended up not needing, you know, but um it reminded me of what you said before about the man that needed to go out of his way to tell you, I'm rejecting you because yeah. you're a widow. Like, like this wasn't just a question about what do I do about this? This was, why are these women doing this when they shouldn't be doing this? This was very right. much a judgmental condemning response oh, yeah. of yeah. women shouldn't be dating. They shouldn't be dating if they're not willing to cancel their, like, like he was needing to voice disapproval. Oh, he definitely was. And he sat there. He was just really cool, too. You know, he sat there like, this is a big problem. You know, and I'm like, you're telling me that I'm a big problem. Mm -hmm. You know, but I was nice. I, I handled it professionally. But no, it really did bug me. It bugged me for like the rest of, the, you know, only only had four people come in and ask questions. But it was like, you're a red flag. You know, I, 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 yes. I couldn't even believe like he was saying that out loud. And I, he didn't know I was a widow when he said it. But it was like, dude. So you answered, I thought, very kindly and repeatedly, but he kept pushing back and pushing back. And also, so I'll play, this is a couple of, a couple of minutes into your conversation, into your answer. Okay. When okay. you were saying, I know God, I trust God, and he will take yeah. care of men who take care of the widows. Because that's what you were saying is this is a beautiful way to take care of a widow to for, yeah. you know. Yeah. So here's one of his responses. This was, I think, his maybe last pushback. And Heavenly Father is going to take care of the people who take care of the widows. There's no doubt in my mind. So does that help you a little? Well, we don't have polygamy anymore. And that would be understandable. Like Brigham took care of all these widows when he was in his life, his last part of his life. Right. I don't think he bothered more than uh, four or five wives with children, but he, he had married like 20 something just to take care of them. Right. But I'm not here to take care of someone. I'm here right. to find someone that I can be eternally sealed with. Right. So I guess the answer to your question. So you went on to give him the advice, don't date don't widows. Don't date a widow. Don't date, I mean, a, it's really simple. But that's a big part of the problem that we have is that men won't date widows. So we have mm -hmm. like a woman widowed as an early 20 or which, you know, I yeah. like, like we have women when all through who can face this challenge their entire life. Mm -hmm. of men who just have the parameters set, I won't date widows, or who say, I will, I would like to marry you, but only if you will cancel your first ceiling. And what that does to a woman to have to choose, you know, her wow. husband, like, like, it's just an in, impossible situation that we have created for many women. It is. And we all joke because the widowers will date outside our group. We, you know, we'll all talk about it. It's like, we have such awesome girls in our big group. Why don't they date us? Because, right. they're, you know, they've dated and married divorced women, you know? So I've never gotten an answer from any of them. But yeah, it's just kind of funny that widowers don't always look for a widow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it does kind of leave us hanging. I get the question all the time. I don't understand. How are you still single? 
you know, and I'm like, it's the Scarlet W on my chest. And I really do try to stay positive. I joke around about it all the time because there's not a lot I can do about it. You know, it's just the circumstance. It is. I was, I was happy. And I love, I love your attitude. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm saying your no, life is no, horrible. I'm, That's not my goal I'm at all. Not. What I'm trying to do, I appreciate how positive you are. And I do think you have a wonderful energy and a wonderful, you know, like, oh, thank you. Some guy is going to be really lucky. <laughs> but, um, but I feel like this um, needs to be more people, more people it's, need to be more aware of this, of this challenge it, it, that we There does created. need to be more awareness. Yes. 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 There okay. does need to definitely need to be more awareness of the younger widows. I, I, because, I you know, agree. but I, I couldn't go to somebody and tell them you need to do more for us because I don't have any ideas either. <laughs> you know, right. well, you one know. idea, one idea I have is that we could, like I always say, take polygamy off the shelf and get rid of it because it would solve a huge part of the core, the whole huge core of this problem, not necessarily the getting lawns mode, because that's that's all right, single right. young or women. Right, you know? right, right. That might need different answers, but the Scarlet W could be hugely alleviated by acknowledging that we know less than we think we know and that we do, that that God ordained marriage between a man and a woman every time consistently throughout scripture always right that was God's standard and that would at least take off this part about not dating widows making you end your ceiling and I have I've only ever heard one um apostle or general authority even acknowledge or speak on this and I was glad to hear it because I at least know that they know right? Yeah, they, like right. they are aware right. of it. They just right. don't speak on it. But it was um, Elder Holland. And was it in Lima, Peru? Do I have that right? I think so. So, so I'll play. I, right. I'll I'm play like, some, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. He's I'll play favorite. some clips for that from that. And, okay. um, yeah, and I'll, I'll just add those in later so we can address them. But um, he says exactly what you're saying have faith have faith yes. and marry he, he counsels very clearly marry a widow and yes. and 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 he does a, he at least acknowledges that it's a challenge say like gives the example of his friends and right. and says how much faith that took for that man but i do think my goodness men of faith marry marry the widows, date the widows, because it is such a mistake to have this, again, just how polygamy tends to benefit men at the expense of women, and really primarily at the expense of widows who, the scarlet W, right? right? I, I think that we need to acknowledge that that is a huge problem and see through it and try to eliminate it as much as we can, try to minimize it. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it's a great thought. It's great. It's great to bring awareness to it, honestly. So do I don't, you have I don't see it, I don't see it happening. But oh yeah. really? Okay. Hopefully yeah. if we keep if subscribe to this podcast and share it so more and more people. You know, I think there are a lot of more people waking up to these ideas, trying to right. bring awareness to to the challenges that polygamy still creates for us today. This false doctrine that we have still clung to and I know that you you haven't watched the podcast so I know you're I'm not I'm not know, speaking I've, for I've you one. I'm yes. speaking for myself but um I do want to know have you personally other than that man scrolling through and saying I reject you because you're a widow and you haven't canceled your ceiling have you had other experiences or several, know of other people? several hundred I was gonna okay. say several hundred. Yeah, when people find out I'm a widow, it's like, oh, I recently had a guy pop in on Facebook and I'm in a bunch of different singles groups and I teach dating classes to the singles and um, a guy popped in and he goes, oh, I didn't realize you were a widow. And then he says, I'll have to pray about it. And I never heard from him again. And so it's like something I'm totally used to. I'm like, no worries, I'm used to this. No worry, like, you okay. know, because it's like, oh, dang. You know, he was excited. I was gonna chat back with him. He goes, can so we it's chat? Not, it's not it's, even it's something all, that you, 
it's not something that you have some stories to share. It is something it, that is a daily, consistent, it's, constant it's a, it's part of hundreds, your life. Hundreds of stories. I mean, maybe not. I'm exaggerating. But yes, there's a lot of stories. I have, yes, been rejected. And I don't see it as rejection because I do think that is a worthy thing to be, you know, I mean, they do, it's a, you know, they do need to be sealed and there is confusion about it. So I try not to be too hard on them. <laughs> but the first time I, I think I did say back to him, I said back to one of them, um, I said, I said, you didn't need to say that to me. I said, just pass me by, you know, I said, next widow, just pass her by, you know, I, it's rude. It was rude. You know, so, but like I said, there's not a lot we can do about it. And we do know Heavenly Father and we do know he's going to take care of us. Absolutely. If that's something I've learned as a widow is that Heavenly Father really, really does take care of his children. Like he's had his thumb on me the whole time. So I have a lot of, I have a lot of faith, you know, and good things are going to happen to all of us who are righteous and worthy. That's beautiful. I completely like the core of President Oak's talk of trust in the Lord is so right on the money. It's such true doctrine. And that's, I shared in a previous episode, I should look up which one it is, maybe the one about eternal marriage, but that there's kind of a universality among Christians and Mormons. And even in our, just the culture of things are going to work out, like trust God, God loves us. Yes. We'll yes. be with our loved ones yes. and it's going to be okay. And it, I mean, it could be completely different. We, I mean, we really have no have knowledge no of what the afterlife is. You know, nobody's come and said, it's like this and it's going to be great. And, you know. Absolutely. Yes, I see. That's exactly it, though. I think that the thing that's so interesting is that is the answer. That is the answer is trust God rather than if you are in a situation with a widower who's sealed to two women, you don't need to trust God because you know how it's all going to work out and it's perfect. It's a little package. You have two wives. And the only question is, do I get my own house? According to President right, 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 right. So, so we have that, but then we have everybody else who is, their situation is made that much worse because it doesn't fit in that little package tied with a bow. Right. It's, so I think, I think that's what I guess my, my ideal is, is that we can just say, we have no idea. You know, the only word Jesus gave us directly in the, in, in his own words in the Bible is we, they are not give they neither marry or are, nor are given in marriage in the next life. So we all can interpret what that means. And we've interpreted that to mean you have to be sealed in this life or right. you're out in the cold, but even that doesn't hold up anymore because our teaching official teaching in the church now is anyone who has not had the opportunity to be married in this life will be given those opportunities in the next life. Right. So we really have zero understanding. So I don't think that there needs to be any difference between a widower and a widow in terms of There's... what we claim to understand for right. the eternities. I, I agree. <laughs> That's... I agree with you. Yes. I also, I also just know it's all going to work out, <laughs> you know? Yes. But... That's, you're beautiful. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> And in the meantime, we all do our best to do what we feel inspired to do. And that this is part of what right. I feel inspired to do. So I hope I'm not right. putting words in your mouth. No, no. Um, I, I have, I have dated a couple of really great guys and um, who didn't mind that had that mindset. They're okay. like, if I, t if I do take care of a widow, something great is going to happen to me in the afterlife, you know, that did have a lot of faith in that. And I mean, you know, obviously things didn't work out, but I, I have found I have found some and they were very, very well scriptured and well read in that and, you know, very active temple recommend holders and were willing to, you know, give me a shot. Can I just say that from my outside looking in perspective, hearing you talk about those guys, those guys sound like the ones with righteous desires, like the knight in yeah. shining armor. Those are the guys that I'm like, oh, that's who I'd want to date. So just a word out to any single guys, be those guys. Like you will be so much more attractive to all women because you're not a selfish jerk. I'm sorry. I know you're much kinder <laughs> than that saying it's a righteous desire, but my goodness, right. how selfish it is and how unkind to say, who cares about the widows? I don't know anything about them, but I want my ceiling. I just, right. that is a struggle to me. And that is also the sort of the mindset that I find in polygamy, right? Like right. men, like real men are knights in shining armor that 
that will put their cloak down for the damsel in distress, right? right? And right. if that's a widow, my gosh, good on you. God loves you. You're right there with Jesus, whom he chose to be the father of his son. I mean, I'm right there with Joseph, right. who right. he chose to be the father right. of his son on earth. So right. come on, like trust God. And I, I think, so that's my, that's, that's what I'm going to say. I think you are so kind about this and acknowledging it's righteous desire, but I want to call it out and say, hmm. Well, it's, it's, kind, it's kind of, it's a, it's a catch 22. It's like, okay, then what's going to happen to me in the afterlife? Or, you know, I, I kind of get it. And then, so I study the science uh, uh, behind love and attraction. And that's, I became a dating coach and a relationship coach. Um, and understanding the guy brain, I kind of understand the mentality a little bit more of Okay, go into like, detail on that. So I don't want to represent that I think men are pigs in any way at all, but divorced men have baggage and it's not, I don't want to say all of them do. What's that word? I don't want to, I don't want to say overgeneralize. Them, I don't want to generalize. Thank you. But it's like my ex divorced me. She moved on and married somebody else. It's almost like a keep up with the Joneses thing. Um, rejection does really bad things to men. And yeah, so it's like, oh no, I have to measure up. So sometimes it's not, I don't think it's doctrine at all, as much as it is kind of measuring up to what the ex has done. People get into bad situations and rush into relationships because their ex just got married. You know, I coach people weekly that there's all sorts of disturbing you know, injuries they have from their divorces. So I know there's that aspect of it too. And it's not just doctrine. It's this, I have to measure up because I was just put down kind of thing. So I totally hear you. That is so interesting. If you have time, anyone that hasn't watched already, I can't remember which episode it was. It was a recent one called Oh, is it polygamy and the male brain? It's the one where we go into the science of polygamy. Oh. We talk about these things and the actual hormones and the effects on men's brains that these have. So I want to point out that what you're describing to me is a way that a doctrine can, how can I use it? A, a man who's in an unhealthy place, right? Feeling rejected, maybe overloaded mm -hmm. on cortisol mm -hmm. and testosterone and his brain is in a bad place. Mm -hmm. This is a doctrine that serves him in that place that doesn't call him to be higher, doesn't call mm -hmm. him to go to a better place and to heal. It keeps him stuck there and gives him a way to, it, it's a doctrine that can be weaponized by men who are in a rejected, unhealthy place. Yes. Does that make I'm, sense? I know. I totally get that. The church is not run by divorced men. There's a right. lot they don't get. And I think even our bishops, our state presidents, they have a man brain. They can fix their lawnmower because they can see the mechanics in that. And they're like, Sister Collier, fix, fix your own lawnmower, you know, because they know how to do that. Once they've seen two or three. Again, parts, just, just throwing inside. something out there to not overgeneralize that there are, there is a uh, yes. overlap. But yes. in general, men yes. have more mechanical brains. Women have more interpersonal yes. brains. Okay. Yes. As a yes. one standard deviation, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Thank you for clarifying. Um, but yes. And so I can see their side of that as well, because it's like, they don't understand. It's like, why don't you fix your own mower or you can't replace your own spark plugs or, you know what I mean? Because Absolutely. the church is run by men and I'm not just seeing men at all. Men are totally necessary and they're wonderful, but the church is run by men that don't get there. I'm sure there's no woman one-on-one -on -one course when they become a bishop or a state president or a general authority, you know, so it's just different. Right. And, and throughout these podcasts, I hope everyone's aware, I do try to be very compassionate and charitable to our leaders. So me talking about the yeah. problems with particularly and specifically this doctrine is not necessarily, it, it's not at all intended to criticize our leaders. Right. It's trying to right. say, hey, all of us are trapped in the false traditions of our fathers. Let's start shedding those so we can come closer to better truth. And, right. and so we can recognize how these things are problematic because I appreciate you doing the same thing for single men saying, Hey, this is where they're coming from. 
But I do want to say like, isn't it great when a man can heal and not be in those, like in a way, a man that's in those energies, boy, women run away because. Oh yeah. Well, healthy women uh, run away. Unhealthy yeah. women run right to it. <laughs> right. But, but, healthy but women, my, yeah. yeah, that's my advice is run away yeah. from that because that is not, that is that testosterone cortisol overloaded brain. Yeah. And uh, like we talked about how married men have higher levels of oxytocin and lower levels of testosterone than either single or polygamous men. And that's interesting, right? And so it's interesting. And divorced men, their levels go right up, probably higher in cortisol and definitely right up in testosterone, which is trying to be the king of the hill, which you said is trying mm -hmm. to one up, like right. she's not going to get ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And that's a really, really not like, I hope that single men can recognize, oh, this isn't a healthy place to be. I need to do some work so that I can be that knight in shining armor, that godly man who is capable of having a healthy, happy relationship with a healthy, happy woman. Yes. Well, and I just, I just would think it's, you know, helping the widows and the fatherless. I just think they're going to be blessed beyond like comprehension for doing that and having the faith. But the men that I've found that have been open to dating me have been very, very, um, like I said, well-read in the scriptures and stuff. And they do have a lot of faith anyways. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have been to therapy to get rid of a lot of the baggage. Um, so that does say something. And like I said before, I don't want to diss men, but they kind of are dogs, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Do you mean like the proper care and feeding of husbands? Is that what you mean? Or I have never read that because I don't agree with a lot of things that Dr. Laura says. I know she's a right. doctor, but she's an old doctor. Like things have we've progressed. But I, I just know. wanted to define what you meant by, I yeah. actually haven't read it either. I thought, I wondered if you meant dogs as in they respond to training. Is that what you meant? I'm trying to <laughs> understand. Um, yes. No. Well, okay. So uh, a widowed man, and you can edit this out if you don't like it, but a widowed man is usually married within nine months. Right. Within nine months of my husband dying, I was still going to school I was a preschool teacher at the time with my pants unzipped and two different color shoes on. Like I was not in any kind of place to make any decisions or anything. And they're usually married within nine months. And so they have the capacity to break up with someone or divorce and then just get right into another relationship. So when I said men are dogs, they're not dogs. But you know how dogs can go from female to female to female to female? <laughs> Oh, wow. it's kind of the same idea, you know? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. So some people are going to hear that and use that as a um, evidence for that polygamy is good. And I think I would interpret that differently because I did actually just look up those statistics recently that men are much in general, after um, a spouse dies or divorce, they move on much more quickly. And yes. um, that, that is statistically true. I think that there are a variety of reasons for that. One is availability. There, are, There's, you know, it's it's easier to find a single woman in general than to find a single eligible man, man often right. is often the case. Right. But also men, um, how, how do I, I wish I had just read through this right now, but somehow marriage or or a companionship regulates a man in ways that are very good for him and he doesn't do yes. as well alone yes. so i think it's a yes. combination yes. of yes. that a woman they, maybe they don't do as well yeah yeah and it's not it's not an insult it's just that men no. do much better with a woman a woman gen oh again we're talking it over generalizations we're gonna get so i much know i know we so, are not generalizing <laughs> yeah like please know these are over generalizations that, but they are statistically true they are that statistically generally true. women can do more women are capable of doing better on their own than men are Amen. of doing on their own just even yes. emotionally and you know so so, and then also, like you said, I think that probably for some women, the um, attachment to that specific man that they have lost is more, it, it's more about attachment to that specific man than attachment to a man, right? Yes. And for men, yes. sometimes it's attachment to a woman is so important that they move on quickly. 
yeah. even though yeah I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what it is I haven't studied that part of it but I did have a widower tell me he was over 65 I think and he said he said if I don't die in the next three years that means I'm going to live because usually a widower will die within three years of his oh. house after a certain age and he's like dang I hit that it means I'm gonna live you know so there is something about the man meeting a woman um, but I don't know specifically what that is. Okay, that's so interesting. So yeah. they'll move yeah. on quickly or for older men, they'll die more quickly because mm -hmm. for like often I've heard it said that like a woman is a man's purpose for everything he does. And, you know, like that's what I mean by that kind of right. it gives yeah. him it, it's it's sort of the the gravitational it's, pull it's that kind keeps of, him in, structured in the wiring you know all the dating coaches that I've ever listened to it's like you know um just tell him he's great you know like men need this validation and men need this stuff and it's and it all comes from us it's like if you want to catch a man you have to make him feel emotionally connected to you because this is how they are but it's like no always validate him always tell him he's awesome he needs all that you know kind of stuff and so it's like it it it, it is in the wiring somehow i i couldn't tell you how though okay you know so okay this is interesting so statistically men move on more quickly than women yes. into yes. a subsequent relationship but that doesn't in any way um i i want to clarify that that doesn't in any way that's not evidence to say that men should have more than one relationship at a time. However, oh heaven, man, heavens no, heavens no. I mean, I think it, it's pretty much all over the scriptures that they shouldn't. Right, right. That they that they shouldn't. So yeah, no, I'd go with that one. No, I I can see that, and I could see, um, I can see that. I can see that being exciting for men. But my husband used to say, you know, he'd walk in the door after work and I'd start talking to him about the day and he'd go, this makes me believe that polygamy is not true. He goes, I couldn't imagine two women doing that to me. Oh, that's <laughs> so funny. You know, because mm -hmm. I would, I'd unload the day on him and he's like, okay, I let me get my shoes off. And, you know, he's like, what if two women were doing that? Anyways, so. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. You know, so. I mean, so moving yeah. on and needing and and men doing better in a relationship is is it's a relationship right that's what that's what right. the value is um for a man so yeah. okay is there anything else that we haven't covered that you think would be valuable to talk about i'm trying to think we've covered so many things that were so unexpected <laughs> oh, <laughs> so many, oh i hope it's okay so many unexpected things came up that i'm like wow um i cannot think of anything have, okay. Have, have we covered everything? I'm just trying to think now because this, yeah, this was really fun. <laughs> Good. So as a relationship coach and a dating coach, what advice would you give to, I guess, both widows, young widows, and also single men? Like if you could, if you could say, this is the very best that you, thing you can do, you know, what is some advice that you would give? Well, I just think, to love God is to know God. And it really does take a lot of faith, but we can have that. You know, we, you know, it doesn't, something as good is going to happen. I just think God is so just and loves us so much that nobody's going to be punished for marrying a widow. Nobody is going to not get a chance to have that ordinance. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But, you know, if you don't know God and love God, start because he's just and kind and loves us. And that's the ultimate source. I love that. I talked in other episodes about um, how I believe that the adversary's tools, like like the center of the adversary's tools in my in my worldview are in my experience are fear and shame and um blame or resentment mm -hmm. that's yeah. and so if those are the motivations then you know that you're not i i believe i try never to i try to not make decisions based on any of those right um, motivations right. and on right. the other side i believe that the motivations of god are just true love 
and peace and truth, right? Yes. And so if we're looking at this topic, um, even of not dating a widow, that seems to be really based in fear, right? Fear about the yes. next life. Yes. And also some level of shame in terms of like, I've got to, I can't be left behind where my ex-wife is right. or, right? right? right. And right. then also some level of blame. They shouldn't be out dating. They shouldn't be in the in, in right. the dating pool when they're not counseling their ceilings, right? And so I think that it's good to see, oh, I don't think that those are godly motivations leading to that attitude. And right. whereas, like you, you said, to have love and say, I love this woman and I want to be married to her and I love God and I know that God is good. So I know, you know, and we can say, let's just cut the whole polygamist idea ideology out of it because really a woman marrying a widowed man shouldn't have an easier time of it than a man marrying a, like it should be the same right, thing right, it should be exactly right, the same so right. if we can just come to it and say i don't know exactly what this is going to look like but um but i know that god is good and i know i love this person and i know i love god so i'm good like which of those feels better right which of those feels right. like it's divinely inspired right and then i also want to repeat the plea, I guess. Well, and first of all, the single women, like in general, I just, and single men, I think we all can strive to do better to help them feel seen and understood. And because there are so many less, there are so many times that that's a painful place to be, but I yeah. think it's good to draw extra attention to the single widows, the young widows in particular, because I think we do give a like, it's easier. Ah, oh, I don't want to compare. We have a place to fit in older widows we don't really yeah. have a place for younger widows to fit in our paradigm or our experience and so that's really good for all of us to be more aware of and um and do you have any recommendations what would you advise if you could say this is what it should look like i know you said you didn't have perfect solutions but what would you think um oh as far as like us and the church yeah, like for individuals, like, what would help you as a young widow? What would have helped you feel more seen and included? And also, what can you imagine maybe the church could do to be more helpful? Other than clarifying, we don't know anything about marriage in the next life and getting rid of this, this red W that you all right, wear, the scarlet right. W. Other than that, what would you advise? Um. So your first question was what? Because I had an answer for that. I don't have the first an question was us as individuals. What what would what could we do that would help young widows or that would have helped you? Um, the way people say things is valuable. You know, um, trying to include us by being condescending. Oh, oh, I, I honestly, I'm like, I'm the stepchild. Oh, what, what do we do with you? Oh, it, it's a big relationship dinner. I remember being on the committee, um, the party committee for Relief Society. And we were doing a relationship dinner. It was like, oh, what do we do with you? And I was like, I'm like, you leave me in the kitchen and you guys go enjoy your husbands and the relationship dinner, you know, and let me do stuff kind of thing. But it was watch what you say, watch what you say and how you say it. Because we don't have the plague. We're not contagious. <laughs> you know, it's almost like talking to a sick person sometimes just just some of the ways that people have said things to me. So okay. I guess that, I guess that would be my big advice and include us include us, not as a single person include us as a person. I didn't mind being in the kitchen. They could have said, would you be in the kitchen for the relationship dinner? <laughs> you know, and I would have or been they like, could have said, they could have said, these are the things we need done. So, oh, yeah. what advice do you have for the singles in the ward? Or, you know, would you like to get a date? Would you like to come with a friend? Would you like to be in the kitchen and let you have yeah. your own autonomy yeah. to, 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 right? I, somehow if we, t again, taking right. the fear out of it right. is helpful. Right. Right. And on another note, I would really love to choose my calling, but <laughs> I hear you on that one. <laughs> like, ask single people what they would like to contribute in the ward, maybe not necessarily let them choose their calling because there's been some callings I've had that's like serious. 
um, you know, in my life right now, I travel and do other things as a coach. And so it's not conducive to some callings, but there's just been some kind of insensitive things along the way that, um, oh, because you're single, you could do this kind of thing. Um, because you're single, we're going to put you with another single sister to do this. So, yeah. My, um, I have a couple of experiences with that. I think that that's a, a general, like, I had um, my first four children really close together. I'll sh share my story, then share one of my sisters. This isn't about single, but I had four. I had two in diapers 18 months apart and 18 months later had twins. So I had oh. four in diapers. The oldest wasn't, well, had barely turned three. And I was called to be a nursery worker. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the no. first calling I ever turned down. I was like, no. Okay. And then, um, and then, so, so that sometimes happens, but I do, my sister who has spent, who spent a lot of years single in the church, she was called to be, I, I, she was, she was not doing well, just so many responsibilities. She had no financial support that, you know, she was the provider and the single parent and, and not an all, at all involved um, ex-husband financially or in any way. Oh, wow. And she was just trying so hard and I think a man in the ward was a single father and the ward was like yeah. organizing meals to be brought over and you know I, I don't know if he had just moved into the ward or whatever and she and then while that was happening she was called maybe to be the compassionate service leader and given this big list of risks and she just broke down at that point and said if I were a man you would be arranging help for me right. but you want me to be the one giving service when I have this house full of children and I'm trying, killing myself, right. working, trying to be a mom. Right. So there is definitely a need to be aware. I think that just in general, I mean, we all need to be more inspired by the spirit because there are hard times for everybody everywhere, but single, single people in general, um, and maybe single women need some of our extra prayers and guidance. We just need all to be as active activated by the spirit as we can be yes and then I think yes. I love your attitude because on all sides to do our best to both be inspired but also to be quick to forgive quick to understand right like right and I mean you do, I have to put myself in their shoes and say okay I get it you know but yeah okay and I, I would say that put yourself in our shoes for a minute you know to uh, you know it's like if you you know, if you're wondering about us, put yourself in our shoes and, and, and how would that feel? You know, I, I don't feel right, like, right. person, you know, and so, yeah, for church leaders, I would say, yes, do that. Um, cause well, and to happens. not have it go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just was, I, it just doesn't happen a lot. They just don't, you know, it's like, I, oh, Sharon's doing okay. You know, <laughs> Sharon hasn't asked for anything. She's doing okay. So, okay, let me, let me just add this in while you're saying that, um, while you are saying, put yourself in our shoes, I do want to say the same thing for those who are committed to the idea of polygamy, right? To who are committed that, do, that polygamy is an eternal doctrine of God inspired by God. Put yourself for a minute in the shoes of widows who are told, right. oh, I won't date you. Oh, you shouldn't be dating. Oh, you have to choose between your beloved husband who, you know, who has died and me, you need to leave one of us out in the cold or you right. like, or, or who are just told again and again, I'm not going to date you. I'm not going to date you. And, and who don't have the opportunity to remarry and live many young widows live their, their majority of their life alone mm -hmm. centrally because of this problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think Jesus, who is the ultimate one who understands each of us, right. Would God who told us all of these things about caring for the widows who paid so much attention to that would God ordain a doctrine that took widows who traditionally have always been the ones the most in need widows and orphans right right and still in many ways are would God ordain a doctrine that would push them even lower that would elevate those at the top at right. the expense of those at the bottom consider that pray about that ask God if that right. is truly of him because we have we have oh I didn't write down the verse oh it's the people of King Limhi I want to say who were defeated by the the um Lamanites three times and then they finally humbled themselves to the earth and accepted the burdens that were put on them so they were incredibly poor they were enslaved and captive 
And there were many, 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 many widows because the only reason, like they had lost too many men to even try to fight anymore. Right. And King Liam High assured that those widows would be cared for and it didn't require them being married to do it. He didn't set up a polygamous right. system to pretend right. that the reason for it was to care for the widows. Right. So I think that throughout time, God has a special place in his heart. Jesus certainly did and spoke about it often about the widows and the orphans. And oh, yeah. I think if we would be godly, we need to do the same thing and refuse to believe in a doctrine that further harms those who already have a hard road to hoe, the widows. And right, the orphans. right. So that's right. my plea to, to the listeners is to really take that to the Lord if you're still considering these ideas. Right. But Sharon, I want to thank you so much for being willing to sit down with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. I know we went a lot of places you I guess didn't expect so I know <laughs> that's what editing's for right 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 but anyway no. I hope that you enjoyed our time together and would you sure like did. to end with a testimony is there anything you'd like to share in closing am I putting you on the spot you are putting me on the spot um no there really isn't I appreciate you doing this I appreciate you um I feel validated today and um, I appreciate you doing this. I, I'd never really considered the fact that it was really polygamy that really has done this, you know, that's put the Scarlet W on me. And so um, I appreciate you today. Thank you very much. Sharon, thank you so much. Thank you. And I do just want to restate your testimony that you've stated so many times about trust God and God loves yes. us. Yes. And it's all going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. But the more that we can do to get rid of false traditions, the the more quickly it can be all be okay. <laughs> right, right. You never know. You never know. Right. So thank you so much. A two-hour much. church, you never know, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.